Well, as I'm sure you recognize since we started with that song, that Mike is our musician today. Yeah. Yay, Mike. And of course, the rest of our service today is the Reverend Jean Celia. Yay. Yay. <laughs> two for two. Doing good. I like it. Doing good. Okay. Well, welcome everybody today. It's so nice to see you. Some that haven't been here for a while, it's nice to have you back. Uh, and look at the weather. Uh -huh. How about that? And you might notice that the yard looks really nice, too, because Michael's been busy mowing it, and it looks very nice, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. It looks good. It looks very nice. Uh, and now it's time to light the Christ candle, and Pam has asked if she could do that today. So here you are, hon. Um, I want to say thank you for holding me in my heart your hearts this week as I deal with the loss of my sister mm -hmm. and Cheryl too, the mother and the Course of Miracles calls these people mighty companions and the light is in you and me and everyone. Thank you. I thought I could do this better. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, where's the thing? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Hey, you should have been here last week when I lit that and almost set the church on fire. Yeah, okay. A little humor is helpful. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you, Pam. A new candle. Yes. <laughs> you didn't see the fiasco I had last week with the candle. <laughs> yes, I thought, no, better see if I can get the new one out there. Well, it was awful. <laughs> It was just terrible. Ended up having to dump the wax out of it, and that made a mess and did not work at all well. Oh, and guess what? It's your turn to do an opening prayer. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Happy June. Yeah. Right? Wow. Um, I want to just say I think the bulletin today, I love the colors on the inside. And I noticed John matches those colors. <laughs> Way to go, John. Yes. <laughs> so let's just take a moment and oh, take a deep cleansing breath. And just exhale all the way and let go whatever thoughts, concerns. you had just a moment ago and allow yourself the gift and the freedom of being in this moment a moment that is love that is peace a moment beyond all sense of loss all sense of fear a moment when we are truly in the one. We are together. We are united. For we are each perfect expressions of that one essence that is all that is and that is love. I know we are each here this morning by divine appointment. I just invite you to be present in every moment this morning and allow yourself to exist in the perfect flow of grace, of love, for that is what and who we are. And I say thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. Amen. And unless you've changed it on me again, no. we're going to do a congregational song, please. It's in the hymnal number 227. Oh, that I am free for the ages rich 
that's out of sequence. <laughs> I can. I can. You need, you need to. No. All right. I just skipped over it. <laughs> Jackie, would you please do the daily word for us? <laughs> well, I skipped over you, Jackie. Oh well, that's the, beyond that, it even gets worse. I skipped over the prayer box, too, so, you know. Yeah, but I was letting Jean start. I'm skipping all that. Oh, I see. <laughs> We're back on. Are we back on? Are we okay now? Jackie's up. Okay. Good morning, all. Good morning. Daily word today is diversity. I appreciate the vastness and diversity of the world. As I walk through a garden blooming with spring flowers, I delight in the symphony of colors and fragrances. When I pause and look more closely, I see that no two blossoms are identical. I appreciate both the exquisite beauty of the garden and the unique contribution that each blossom offers. In the beautiful diversity of colors, shapes, and fragrances, I experience the beauty of God. As I grow in spiritual awareness, I recognize that the human family, even more magnificent than a spring garden, reflects the beauty and the glory of God. Each racial, cultural, and spiritual group within the human family adds richness to the human experience. Each person expresses the beauty of God in a unique way. God saw everything he had made, and indeed, it was very good. Genesis 1.31. Thank you, Jackie. And now is when I remind you of the prayer box up here. And you will find prayer requests on the back of the pews. So if you have a request or a gratitude thing or anything that you want to do, you're more than welcome to fill that out. You can bring it up here and put it in the box yourself. You can put it in the brass bowls when they come around, or you're welcome to take it and put it in the 
back there in the prayer corner because all of them are collected at the end of the month and they are sent off to Silent Unity for another month of prayer. And last month's went in this last Wednesday, right, Nellie? And now if you will join me, please, with the affirmation for June. You'll find it in your bulletin. And we'll do the one for Unity by the Sea first, please. <clears throat> Moving forward in love, Unity by the Sea is a joyous expression of Christ. And for ourselves, Moving forward in love, I am a joyous expression of the Christ. Now Mike's up again. One suggestion, do not think about fear, bikinis, just have a couple of pieces of paper and today I thought, oh, I have talk in a tote. I brought a whole tote bag of stuff. <laughs> I've had that song in my head ever since I heard Mike practicing it for the last several days. <sighs> Good morning again, everyone. Are we ready for summer? Lazy, hazy, crazy days. 
Memorial Day and summer solstice coming up, right? You just have to look at John and smile. All those colors. Yeah, we like it. I was also thinking of the song, remember, Summertime and the Living is Easy. Yeah. Yeah, and the living is easy. Um, what else is summer? No school. It's vacation, right? Longer daylight hours. Hip, hip, hooray. I like it. Sunshine. It's all of those memories. Traffic. I heard that, Terry. Okay, traffic. <laughs> Which means stay home and enjoy the sunshine. <laughs> all those memories and emotions of summertime. And you know, there are suggested, for those who still read books, which is me, suggested summer reading lists of books, right? I just saw in the Washington Post this morning, there was um, 10, the top 10 uh, summer reading books suggested. And then there was also the top 10 audio books suggested, right? And so that's what you do instead of going in the traffic. You just kind of um, swing in the hammock and read your book. You kind of sit on the deck relaxing and listen to that book, whatever it is. And of course, there are schedules of lots of fun things to do, especially here at the beach, right? You can go kayaking. Uh, in fact, Mike and um, my brother and my niece last year went kayaking around the um, estuary, and it was, um, it, it, they just loved it. Yeah, I stayed home with mom, you know, not my thing. So kayaking, there's horseback riding. We've done that on the beach before. Lots of things to do. Kite flying. Oh, yeah, that's what we're known for. There's hiking. Of course, the state and county fairs. A lot to do in these lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer. There is, however, another dimension of summer beyond the doing. What is that dimension? Okay, here's a hint. The hint is in our name. I don't mean your name and mine. I mean our name. Now, you may have heard this, that we are called human beings. Okay, that's a sciencey thing. We are not called human doings. We are human beings. Beings. And so when we think about that unseen dimension of summer, being, it's about our inner life. It's about the Christ light in each of us. It's about spirituality and divinity and growing in that understanding. So this morning, I just invite you to join me in considering and creating some ideas and inspirations to grow with this summer. Beyond the doing, beyond the kayaking and the laying in the hammock reading a book, we could lay in the hammock and meditate, right? Beyond the doing, because we are human beings. You may have received paper and pen this morning, just in case you want to take some notes for this summer. I live by lists, and so I don't, I don't know why I think other people do as well, but there it is. I just thought, well, I'd make it available to you. Just write down what speaks to you, and if you just want to write down your grocery list, that's OK, too. At least I'll think you're paying attention because you're writing down, you know. Um, you don't have to show it to me. No. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Oh, no. <laughs> it's only for you. Perhaps this summer, you're willing to set an intention to meditate every day, or as often as you'd like to. Perhaps you can make a more conscious effort to chant a lot. There are so many chants. And you know what? Sometimes I just make up my own. And I just go around chanting chants that I make up. It keeps me focused. It is that focus on that other dimension of being and not doing. 
sometimes I say affirmations. And it may be, remember last time I was here, I talked about the Thomas Troward affirmation that is three or four paragraphs long. Sometimes it's something I've memorized like that. Other times I just make it up. I am the very freedom of God, for I am the light of Christ on earth. Whatever it is, just make it up. Keeping you focused on that other dimension. And so I just invite you to be this summer and to set your intentions. You know, I uh, wear a Fitbit, and I know several people may also. And so, of course, I have Mother Goose and Grimm here, speaking of Fitbits. Because my intention, which I set four days ago, and I have done it every day, is to get at least 8,000 steps on my Fitbit. I know, you know, Mike often does 12, 15,000, and that's good for him. I am delighted with 8,000, because we each have our own intentions, right? So, um, Kat says to Grim, I don't get it. You racked up 30,000 steps today on your Fitbit. But you never left the house. Of course, that got my attention. I thought, how did he do that? And what did, what did Grim say? You know, I just wear it on my tail. <laughs> <laughs> now, that got me thinking. <laughs> we do have a dog, two dogs now. Some of you may know we got a second dog, and her tail wags all the time. Man, I know. I'm not going to do that. No. There are so many rationalizations and justifications for skipping our spiritual practice today. You know, last night it was fairly late, and I was feeling tired, and I only had 6,500 steps, and I said, oh, you know, I'll do it tomorrow. And no, I went out and walked the dog and got another almost 2,000 steps. There are so many rationalizations, justifications. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. And then what happens? We forget about it. Right? We forget about that commitment, that intention to practice every day. And so what we do is revert to not practicing every day. You know, I return time and time again to the teachers and the way showers. I, it's, I return to the Bible. I return to the wisdom and the inspiration of the ages so often. And so I thought, okay, how critical is daily spiritual practice? And I turn to Emily Cady from Unity an incredible way shower, an inspiration, and I looked at lessons in truth. And Emily Cady says, you may be so busy with the doing, the outgoing of love to help others, that you find no time to go apart. But the command, or rather the invitation, is to come ye apart and rest a while. And it is the only way in which you will ever gain definite knowledge, newness of experience, steadiness of purpose, and power to meet the unknown which must come in all daily life. Doing is secondary to being. All right. Thank you, Emily Cady. And then there's that... Um, a little bit of truth that I shared last time I was here, which is the um, wisdom. Remember I talked about Conrad Hilton? And it's the wisdom that Conrad Hilton's mother told him regularly, and that is, prayer is the best investment you can make. Prayer is absolutely the best investment you can make because from that other dimension springs forth our life, our experiences. And so here are a few other inspirations to grow with right now, this summer, right now. Uh, the one I talked about last week, or last time I was here, two weeks ago, is one that I've just kind of keep in the front of my mind because it is so powerful. 
The past does not define you. Right. My past does not define me. And neither does yours define you. Right? God knows no precedent. Every moment is new. I am not bound by those sideboards of my past, even a minute ago. Every moment. Behold, I make all things new. Every moment. And so, I also look to divine science which um, the three sisters who, I will say, founded divine science, whose that inspiration came through them, the three um, sisters, the Brooks sisters, were students of Emma Curtis Hopkins, peers of the Fillmores and Ernest Holmes, um, Althea Brooks, Fanny Brooks, and Nona Brooks. Right, and I'll just read you a few th few words of inspiration from them, divine science. God the good is omnipotent. God omnipotent means God everywhere present. My good is ever present. The knowledge that God is all in all eliminates all fear. A mind centered upon good has no false beliefs because we are focused on good, on God, on that other dimension. Since God is infinite, there is no place for anything contrary to God. All is good. And we read that time and time again. That is the truth. No matter what it looks like, what it feels like, as we are willing to peel away those layers of the onion, we discover that God is at the very core. And truly, all is good. What they, uh, divine science says about being, which is what we're talking about this morning, is all that is both visible and invisible, another name for God. God is all, visible, invisible, that is being, being in that presence, as that presence, right? I will tell you that um, my summer reading list, so far I have two books on it, the first is Powerful is the Light, and that is a story about Nona Brooks, one of the founding sisters of Divine Science staunch student of Emma Curtis Hopkins. And I've read this several times. I haven't read it for years. And as I was looking through Divine Science, I thought, uh, I need to read about Nona again and get inspired by her wisdom and his, her, her speaking and being the essence of God. So that is number one on my being list this summer. And that took me to another just infinite inspiration for me, and that is the Nag Hammadi Library. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Um, it's comprised of some spiritual texts. They were written in the fourth century on papyrus manuscripts, and they were buried around 400 AD. They were discovered in a cave in Egypt by some peasants looking for, I don't remember exactly what, um, looking for something, and they discovered these in a cave in Egypt near Nag Hammadi, which is why they're the Nag Hammadi Library, because it's a compilation of that. These were written different times by different people, very, um, <coughs> very diverse. I'll use that word that Jackie shared this morning. Very diverse writings. We don't know, it's not known, was it, were they collected by a person, by a group, and buried? Unknown. I will say many pages are missing, and some areas are missing or badly deteriorated, and it is amazing. The reason I got it, um, one of my, well, my most recent spiritual teacher, Reverend Dr. Marcia Sutton, um, talks about it quite a bit, and what piqued my interest is, there is the Gospel of Mary in it. 
I thought, what? The gospel? A woman? Really? The gospel of Mary? Unfortunately, most of those pages are missing. And yet I read it over and over anyway. Um, I just want to read one little thing out of this right now. It says, and this is also about the Nag Hammadi Library. There is hazard in the transmission of the text by a series of scribes who copied them generation after generation from increasingly corrupt copies, first in Greece and then in Greek and then in Coptic. The number of unintentional errors is hard to estimate since such thing as a clean control copy does not exist, right? These are ancient, ancient texts copied over, over decades by scribes. And so it's a little frustrating to read them. And it's kind of eerie because they are so similar to other texts in the Bible. And so um, I have talked several times about the Gospel of Thomas. I always call my talks Thomas today because it is relevant today, right? Every spiritual text is as relevant today as it was then because it's living. It lives through us as us. It's interesting because I look back over some of my notes on the Gospel of Thomas and I had put G, capital G, small OF, and capital T for Gospel of Thomas. And at the time that I wrote my notes, there was no such thing as Game of Thrones that today uses the capital G, small OF, capital T. And I looked at that and just laughed and I thought, oh my gosh, who knew I would be a way shower? You know? <laughs> that I would be the inspiration for Game of Thrones. I don't just say it. It's possible. It's very possible. And so from the Gospel of Thomas, I will say that there are so many things in the Gospel of Thomas that I have thought about, meditated on for a long time, and still don't fully understand them. And yet, the Gospel of Thomas is only 15 pages out of this library of 549 pages. Just 15 pages. And I could meditate on that probably for the rest of my life. Of course, I'm a little older, so it's not as long as it used to be. <laughs> However, <laughs> I know when I say that now, I think, oh, gee, that doesn't quite have the same impact that it used to. OK. Um, from the Gospel of Thomas, Let's see if this speaks to you. Page 127, verse 8. The man is like a wise fisherman who cast his net into the sea and drew it up from the sea full of small fish. Among them, the wise fisherman found a fine, large fish. He threw all the small fish back into the sea and chose the large fish without difficulty. Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. Now, I have thought about that so often. And I often get um, mesmerized. My attention gets caught by the small fish. Instead of allowing them to be thrown back and keep the big fish, the wisdom in it. That's what I got out of it. I don't know. I just don't. That was a complicated one for me. I'll read one more and then move on to my next inspiration. When you make the two one, and when you make the inside like the outside, and the outside like the inside, and the above like the below, and when you make the male and female one and the same, so that the male not be male, nor the female female. When you fashion eyes in place of an eye, and a hand in place of a hand, and a foot in place of a foot, and a likeness in place of a likeness, then you will enter the kingdom. When we have 
neither male nor female, when we have neither inside nor outside, when we know that there is only one essence and one energy that is God, there is no division. There is no separation. There is no male and female. There is only God. So much to think about this summer. And then I look to Joel Goldsmith. I have so many of his books, and I've read almost all of them. The Infinite Way. Who's familiar with Joel Goldsmith and The Infinite Way? Yes? Um, what The Infinite Way, I'll just read a few things from this. True prayer or meditation is not a thinking about ourselves or our problems, but rather the contemplation of God and God activities, the nature of God and the nature of of the world that God has created. When we pray, when we meditate, it's not about us. It's about dropping all of that, allowing it to, to drift away so we focus on that other dimension, on God, on good. There are some um, bits of wisdom in this book. And I will tell you, this is the second book on my summer being list. The Infinite Way. Begin your spiritual life with the understanding that all conflicts must be settled within your consciousness. And I can tell you, every day I begin my spiritual life anew. And so do we all. In the spiritual life, you place no labels on the world. Boy, I could meditate on that just for the rest of the summer, right? Place no labels on the world. You do not judge as to good or evil, sick or well, rich or poor, while appearances may show forth harmony or discord. By not judging, you merely know is. He often uses that word for God, capital I-S, is. And let that which truly is define itself. In other words, get out of your own way. What would your life be like this summer if you allowed God, grace, Holy Spirit, to flow through you and define itself through you? Oh my goodness. Be at peace. God is. What if this summer you focused on that peace that you are and just breathed it? Rest in the deep, clear well of contentment within you. Peace already is. Have no desires in the world. Let God's grace suffice. And this one I, I meditated on for a very long time probably two decades ago, and it just still speaks to me. The crucifixion of the self is accomplished when there is nothing left for which you wish to pray. When you know that you are and God is, there's nothing to pray for. There is just a knowing, a being. And of course, we come to as I think of her, kind of the ultimate, Emma Curtis Hopkins, known as Teacher of Teachers, right? She taught the Fillmores and Ernest Holmes and the Brooks Sisters and so many more. I think of her as a master teacher. And so I chose the book that I first, I've been studying her for probably more than 30 years, and I chose the book that I first um, became acquainted with her through. In her works, there is such transmission of truth and wisdom and inspiration. And so I'll first go to page 69. This is the um, Gospel Series in Spiritual Science, Emma Curtis Hopkins. And she writes, there is one evidence of understanding which is unmistakable. Evidence of understanding. That is, when we understand what is the evidence. When we understand God. What's the evidence? It is the love we feel in the heart for everybody and everything. 
What if this summer you felt in your heart love for everybody and everything? Oh my gosh. And I don't mean accept that guy at work. I don't mean accept your neighbor two doors down. I mean everybody and everything. It is not a question of what they do or do not do. It is the spontaneous kindness which we feel without effort. God is love. And as she says, there is one evidence of understanding which is unmistakable. And last time I was here, or two times ago, um, I quoted from John 13, 34 and 35, and talked about the New Testament, about the New Covenant. A new command I give you. What is it? The very essence of the New Testament, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know you are my disciples if you love one another. That's exactly what Emma's talking about. That's exactly what John talked about. Because it's all, everything I've read this morning is the same. It's just some words, some transmission speaks to our heart and some doesn't at this moment. So I wanted to share some different ideas and authors with you some different transmissions of truth because it is so critical that we that we set our intentions on daily spiritual practice it is so important important maybe it's just a word that speaks to you this morning or a, an idea or a phrase or a feeling an emotion whatever that is i just invite you not to make rationalizations and justifications and then forget about it Make this be your, allow this to be your summer of transformation. Your summer of shifting, even if it's a little. One more quote from Emma, and then we will move into our time of meditation. Emma writes, there are not multiples of beings. There is only one. There is nobody hungry for us to serve him. There is only one to serve, and that one is already satisfied. Right? There's nothing to serve. There's nothing to do. There's only to be. To hold this porthole open for the radiance of divinity is to pour through. To pour through is to be strong, to bear up the race of men in our arms while we wash them from all past thoughts. A different way to say, we are all one. Beyond past thoughts, beyond judgments, right? We are all one. It's like she says earlier, it is the love we feel in the heart for everybody and everything. Let that be your practice this summer, if that speaks to you. To be more loving to more clearly have the eyes and the heart to be love. We will transition into our time of meditation with Emma's crown of glory prayer. And so just invite you to settle back and close your eyes, unless you want to jot down milk or bread or something else on your list. I am a perfect creation of the living God, spiritual, harmonious, fearless, free. I reflect all the universe of good. From every direction, everywhere, come words of truth, making me know that I am free, wise, and happy. I am satisfied with the world in which I live. I show forth to the world health, wisdom, and peace. I show perfect health in every part of my being. I am fearless, free, strong, wise, and able to do everything that belongs to me to do each day. God works through me to will and to do that which ought to be done by me. I am a living demonstration of the power of truth to set free into health and strength for the living service to the world. I acknowledge to the world that I am 
every whit whole. I acknowledge that I am well and strong and alive through and through. God is my life, my health, my strength and support forever. And God saw the works of his hands good. So I am good. All is good. Amen. Allow that eternal sense of peace to settle into your heart. And whatever inspiration spoke to you this morning, allow it to breathe you and to become, become you and you to become it beyond separation. knowing that there is only one, that our covenant is to love one another, that your past does not define you. Whatever that is, allow it to live in your breath in your daily spiritual practice to know that, whether it's five minutes or five hours every day. For I know there is one presence and one essence that is all that is beyond all notion of separation, that is in, through, and as each of us, everything seen and unseen, and that is God, the good, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. And I know that whatever inspiration, whatever wisdom, whatever intuition lives in your heart today grows and is nurtured and feeds that Christ light in you so that it is love beyond all fear, all sense of loss beyond all worries and concerns, that understanding and knowing that is the truth of who you are and who I am and who all are. And I say thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God, for the answer to this in every prayer, always, as I release my word into universal law, into love, knowing it's already done because it is the truth. And so it is. Amen.
ready, just gently open your eyes. Allowing that serenity to continue to breathe you and live in your breath as we say thank you, God. And I think before we get into our time of sharing um, and supporting this amazing community, I think we have another song. Right, Mike? That'll work. Okay, you're on. <laughs> and just enjoy this. does not seem odd that we go from bikinis and beer to how great thou art, right? <laughs> <laughs> and now is the time when we have the opportunity to give back to and to support that which supports us. Our experience from lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer to how great thou art, whatever it is. <sighs> Let's support it. Let's support our community. Let's support our own spiritual growth. And if you would, just lightly hold your gift in your hand and repeat with me the affirmation that is in your bulletin. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Amen. Amen. So it is. 
179 if you don't know the words. Magic Penny. like to invite everyone to the raucous board meeting that we will be having after service. <laughs> um, fun and frivolity. We even have some snacks on here. Um, if you are so inclined, you can return your pens to the um, table in the foyer and if you need a pen, it's yours to keep. <laughs> And I noticed we have some new guests here today, and we welcome you. We have a packet in the back if you are uh, interested. We would be delighted to give you some information about New Minton. And so um, we always welcome everyone here, everyone, because our intention is to be love in action. And so I say thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Thank you, givers, thank you, gifts. For I know that every gift joyously given returns to the giver. Pressed down, shaken together, multiplied, and overflowing in the experience. For I know these gifts go forth to support spiritual growth around the world. And I say thank you, God. Amen. And now I believe Michael will be coming up. And we will join him in saying the statement for peace. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good morning. Please join me in, in uh, reading our statement for peace in your bulletin on a little tan paper. Unity stands for peace in the presence of conflict, for love in the presence of hatred, for forgiveness in the presence of injury. Unity honors the many names for God, the many paths to God, the many ways to worship God. For there is only one power and presence of God, and that God loves each one of us equally. It is therefore the position of unity to urge all nations, their leaders, and their people to turn to God by whatever the name for guidance during these challenging times and to pursue peace, not war, for this is what honors the God of all our faith traditions. Unity stands for peace in our lifetime. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them, and they shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord. I will not be the part of the killing of any child, no matter how lofty the reason, not my neighbor's child, not my child, not my enemy's child, not by bomb, not by bullet, not by looking the other way. I will be the power that is peace. Amen. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. And now let's get together and hold hands in our closing circle. And again, I just want to thank everyone for being with us this morning. And since this is the first Sunday of the month, you know, it is birthday celebration Sunday. So all those who have a birthday, including John, and have a birthday of the month, I will. You will? She has all the birthdays. I'm into it. Sure.
Wherever we are, God is, and all. 